Lord is so good and gracious. Such an honor to be in Nashville. We love coming to this wonderful place. Got two great friends here. Actually, four great friends. Glory to God. I, I preached for them for many, many years. They, they, I, uh, they look younger than me. I think they're older than me, but not by much, I don't think. <laughs> but they do. I got to get that same stuff y'all use on that head. That's, no, no. I'm just, <laughs> that's it. No, I'm <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I brought a coat and tie, and I was looking good, but Pastor Cowan said I can look like this. Is, that, is this okay? Because if you're in Nashville, it's Africa hot right now. You know what I'm saying? It's just Africa hot. Praise God. God is so good and gracious. We thank you. And all you that are watching, and uh, you that are watching online, if you're watching, I don't know if you're streaming that, live streaming, that's what you call it, Kathy. And uh, God has been so good and gracious. You ever get a chance to come to Nashville? Come to this church called Faith is the Victory. And if you're having a hard time, just read the sign. I say it all the time, every time I get here, just read the sign. Faith is the Victory. My God, Victory will come to you just by reading the sign. You know, sign, sign, everywhere, sign. Remember that song? Look at these young people. What? No, yeah, yeah. that's going way back. Praise the Lord. My wife is here tonight. Kathy, stand up. Give my wife a hand clap. Kathy. Hallelujah. This is my first wife. Then my only wife. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is so good. I'm enjoying myself. You know, I come here. I just have to say it, Charles. I'm, I'm just at home. I just feel so at home, Lord. And then when Phil and Barbara walked in, I said, Lord, Jesus, I'm really at home. My Lord, I, I just enjoy myself. You know, I know a lot of people, but I have very few people that I'm close to. Amen. And I don't mean that privately, just the way it, my life is. It runs all the time. And, uh, but I feel so close to these, these two couples here that they're just such a blessing of the Lord. And I mean that sincerely. I've been knowing them for many, many years. God is good and gracious. Come quickly, Joe. Uh, Joe, you brought some new stuff? Good. You got my book? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the COVID shut this thing down for a year because I couldn't get anybody to print it because they, they, they're scared. <laughs> they wouldn't leave the house. I don't know, whatever it took. I love the title of it because it's so true of my life. It's entitled, I Never Learned to Doubt. I know nothing about doubt. When we released this this year, in three days, it became a number one bestseller on Amazon. Three days. Bam! I mean, it just hit. And so many people don't seem to understand why, 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 why do you doubt? Why? Doubt is mental anemia. It's a form of atheism. It really is. It's a form of atheism. I know nothing. See, I wasn't raised like, I guess, a lot of people. I, I was, and this is not being against the Catholic Church. I was raised Catholic. They didn't teach me anything other than the Hail Mary prayer and the Our Father prayer. And I can still quote them things more. Boy, anybody ever been raised Catholic? I bet you could still quote Hail Mary. When's the last time a Protestant church taught you a prayer? <laughs> Think about that for a minute. They should have taught us the book of Ephesians, chapter one, pray that prayer, Lord Jesus. But they didn't because they said, well, you know, we don't, vain, we don't pray vain, repetitious prayer. L ladies and gentlemen, if it's in the Bible, it's not vain, it's not repetitious. I hope you can get this because so many people struggle with doubt when you don't have to. And I'm telling you, this thing is flying off the shelf like crazy, and it's such a blessing. And people say, yeah, but. There's no buts, ands, ifs, so, so's. God means what he says and says what he means. I'm telling you, this will minister greatly to you. I had a person write, call me, and actually wrote me the other day and said, I I've read all your books. This is your best one. Well, this is what I've been waiting to do for a long, long time. Because, you know, a lot of people, they, go, they think it's cockiness. Well, who do you think you are? You don't know, I mean, you don't have enough time to, for me to tell you who I think I am. Because I got to start in Genesis page one and go all the way to the end of Revelation. Because he wrote that Bible for me. I'm in that book. I'm in every chapter. I'm in every word. And so are you. Yeah, thank you. That's right. He sure didn't write it for the devil. He wrote it for us. I hope you can get this. Do you have a copy of this, uh, Charles? Phil, you got to get, get, get me another copy. And give this Charles and give one to Phil too. Okay, what else we got here? Oh, the Big 12, huh? Lord Jesus. People ask me all the time, everything you touch prosperous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Not arrogance, not cockiness, confidence and assurance. But there's principles that I follow. And I wrote this book. It's not a very big book called The Big 12. And when you understand, you go through 12, it's not very hard. It's very simple. It'll actually work for you. I mean, it'll work for you spiritually, physically, financially. And here's something better. You won't even have to wait long for it. If you get the doubt out. And just believe. You know, Bible says if you believe, just believe. That's it. 
How many of you knew I was coming tonight? How'd you know? You couldn't see me. You couldn't hear me. You couldn't touch me. You couldn't smell me. I was not in the rim of your five senses, yet you got in your car and drove over here. What would you have done, <laughs> Pastor? <laughs> Pastor Kyle would have said, uh, Brother Jesse ain't here tonight. I just want to see how many of y'all come out on a Sunday night in Nashville <laughs> when it's hot. <laughs> It'd be a crucifixion on the hill out there, wouldn't it? <laughs> this will bless you. It's entitled The Big 12. It's line upon line, precept upon precept. That's back there if you'd like to get that. And oh, yeah, I love this. This is something that I, I have done all my Christian life. In the Lord, I never really preached much on this, and I decided to do that. It's a, it's, and I love DVDs. I still got my DVD players because think if you had Jesus on DVD or John the Baptist, you'd have to have a heavy duty one because he burned that sucker flat, son. I'm gonna tell you that. That boy preached hell so hot you could smell smoke around him when, when you got, got around John. He's entitled The Secret Place. Where is your secret place? Where do you go where it's just you and God? And no one else. Some people call it a closet. Call it what you want. Where is your secret place? Because Satan's not going to look for it. Why? Because it's a secret. This will minister to you. It, it's a blessing. This is dealing more than with relationship. This is dealing with fellowship. Hello, Jesus. Hi, Jesse. I kind of like that. It's more than being saved. It starts dealing with family. You see, covenant. That's back there if you like to get that. But well, man, you got all kinds. Of, and oh, yeah, I am going to preach this tonight. Finally, glory to God. How many of you get my pardon letter? Thank you. I, the Lord gave me a theme entitled, What Shall I Do for Thee? Now, you know, I get themes every year. And if he doesn't give me one, I'll just say, well, I'll just preach whatever he gives me for the whole year. But this year, God is, the reason why so many people do not have what God wants them to have is because the church wouldn't allow them. You'd be surprised how much limitation that's in the church. And I'm not anti-church because the Bible said the gates of hell not prevail against the church. And God keeps saying, what? Come on, let me, do, let me be the father. Let me be El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough. You're looking at a very blessed man here. Oh, Jesus, I am one blessed puppy. Okay, why? Because I let him. Amen. And then why do you have such a relationship? Because he lets me bless him. So a lot of time I'll get up in the morning and he always asks me, what shall I do? I say, hey, Jesus, what shall I do for thee? What do you want me to do today? Who this is, a, this, and I'm going to preach a little piece of this. This will bless you. That's back there, value stuff. This is our, uh, can you believe it? Everything's digital, but I still do a physical magazine. Now I do a digital, I do both of them, you know. And this thing costs $3 million a year to do this. <laughs> Look at y'all. So don't throw it away in front of me because I'm going to get very angry if you do. <laughs> okay. But most people get it on digital and things of that nature. And people say, I mean, I've had companies say, but you're going to stop printing this because you can do it digital for hardly nothing. No. Why? The Lord said, go on every available outlet. And I mean, you know, Brother, Brother Copeland's every available voice. I'm every available outlet. She don't travel much with me. You just have to learn that, mama. But anyway, praise God. <laughs> she goes, what? Let's see, she's thinking right now. <laughs> anyway. This here, I have people, they, I have one little lady in Texas. She reads it for, then she sends it to all her friends and she expects it back. <laughs> and I said, well, you get, if you get, if they, if they don't, if your friends don't mind, I'll send it to them for free. No, I, I won't be the only one that has it because so they can come to me. <laughs> She's 89. You don't argue with an 89 year old woman. You just say, okay, yes, ma'am. That's free to you back here. If you'd like to get it, go back there, avail yourself to the book and resource table if you so desire. Stand to your feet one more time. Stretch a little bit. If you've got to rub something, rub it quick. Get it over with. I want to get into the Word and let the Holy Ghost maybe move a little bit too. Glory to God. I, like God. I believe in that. Okay, you can be seated. I want to make sure you're, everything is flowing well here. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo, I'm excited. I thank y'all for, am I the first one out to shoot here? I said tomorrow night, who's here tomorrow night? Isaac Petrie, then who's here the next night? Mark Hankin? Mark, okay, praise the Lord. I tell you what, if, I wish I could be here every night, I'd come. I, I wish I'd live here, I'd come to this church. 
just for the name's sake. Jesus, faith is a victory. Yeah, I accept that. Oh, you'd love me as a, <laughs> I'm a good tither. <laughs> oh, sit in the Nashville, praise God. Sit in the Nashville, praise God. Ooh, Jesus. If you got your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of 2 Kings. It's right past 1 Kings. A very simple uh, passage of scripture. I've preached on it many, many times, but I'm going to just preach on one line in the whole passage there. Second Kings chapter four. When the Lord gave me this, uh, he said, I want you to write 12 partner letters, talking about in 2021, on what shall I do for thee? Maybe if you say it 12 times, they may let me do it. Now we have a lot of partners literally all over the world, plus I have offices in other countries and things of that nature. And God wants to do so much for us. But because we have to unlearn some things. Thank God, the reason why I've never struggled much in my life, well, I've never learned to doubt, because, I, see, I never had to unlearn things. Because they never taught me nothing. So when I read the Bible, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, I went, wow, man, God just created the earth. And when I read, by his stripes you were healed, I thought, well, I'll never forget my first pastor, Pastor Sidney Rafer. I mean, I was so excited. I said, hey, Brother Rafer, I found a scripture. He said, what's that? He took our infirmity. He said, that's right. He bore our sickness. He said, that's right. By his strike, we healed. He said, I said, yeah. I said, well, I ain't getting sick no more. He went, uh, 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 uh. Because he was a little, he didn't, he didn't want me to hurt. I said, no, no, no. Did God say that? Right. See, I didn't have to unlearn. Amen. You see, there was no doubt there. He said, yeah. I said, then I won't. And I have it. Amen. Isn't that amazing? I've had many opportunities to be sick. You know, people tell me, you know about that COVID? No, I'm not interested in the COVID. <laughs> COVID-19, what about COVID-6? I bet that's a bad boy too, huh? <laughs> they all got numbers. How many COVIDs we got out there? You know, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Chapter four, verse one. I like the old King James version because that's the one Moses, you know, read out of. I heard somebody say that. That's a lie. It wouldn't even exist in Moses' day. <laughs> now they cried a woman, or now they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. That, that was Obadiah. That's who that was. Obadiah. Right there. Watch this. Thy servant, Obadiah, my husband is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. Now, isn't it amazing to me that a prophet of God like Obadiah can be under a man's prophetic ministry like Elisha and leave his wife in debt? Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. What did he miss? I know what Elisha would do. He had a double portion of the anointing of God on his life. He didn't struggle for nothing. He raised people from the dead when he was dead. Now, if you're under that kind of ministry, you should not be worried about the creditors, right? So it's very possible to go to church all your life and never really receive the most major things that you need in life. Because you think God's trying to teach you something when you already know that. So why would he even do that? Watch this. Now watch what I, let me show you why I know he's debt free. Look what he says in verse two. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Watch this. And when I read that, the Lord said, stop. Make that the theme for 2021. What shall I do for thee? Notice he wasn't struggling. Now, you know, somebody dies, you know, somebody say, can the church help me? Well, you know, we, we, we can send some flowers. You know, we might be able to pay a month's rent, but hey, you know, we, you know, we, 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 we. Elisha don't have that at all. He simply says, what shall I do for thee? Then he asks you, what you got in the house? See, God always starts with a seed. Everything does it with seed, everything. As long as the earth remains, seed time, harvest time, everything, spiritual, physical, and financial. All you people are here because your mom and daddy sowed some seed. Otherwise, you would not be here. Let me just shock you. They did it. I don't mean that to be crude or rude, but that's just a fact. 
<laughs> Look, everybody thinking, no, no, did it? <laughs> he said, what shall I do for thee? So when the Lord gave me that, he immediately asked me, he said, now, Jesse, I'm going to ask you something. Now, I didn't know what he was going to ask me, Phil. I just said, he said, what shall I do for thee? I knew immediately. I said, I want a double anointing, Elisha. I want double outreach. I knew what I was saying because COVID shut everything down. Things are just starting to open up a little bit and I want double the finance. He said, done. He didn't say, man, I, now Jesse, I mean, don't get crazy with this thing. <laughs> he see, what I receive is determined by what I say, yes. by what I believe. Yes. If you say to that mountain, what things ever you desire, not him, you, not him, you. You see, you took the you out. Now, I want you to write this down. I'm going to do a little teaching if I can. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. It's limited by your capacity. Well, I know God said that, but you already shut yourself down right there. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. To receive what? Whatever you're believing for, whether it be spiritual, physical, financial, or all three. You see, your blessings are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. Your blessings are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. Isaiah 119, if you be willing Amen. and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And what part of that you don't understand? You got to be willing. You got to be obedient. Why? Because God want to load you up. He's El Shaddai, not El Chipo. He's the God of more than enough. Let me say that again. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. That's what I'm telling all my partners. Listen to me. You want to be debt free? <laughs> I had a man tell me, Brother I want to be debt free. I said, man, the homeless is debt free. <laughs> that ain't nothing. Why don't you be debt free in the amount of money that you were in debt? House, car, I don't know, whatever you got. Have that in liquid finance in some financial institution. Now you're believing for something. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. Why? Because your blessings are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. You see, I, you've heard me say it many times. I never tell God, I never ask him for a need. I will never do that. I will never ask God for a need. That is a waste of spiritual energy. He said he'll supply how many need? How many need? Oh, let me get black with it. How many need? Lord. So what are you doing asking him for a need? When you ought to be telling him what you want. Boy, I just lost a bunch of them right there. Is the Lord your shepherd? Is the Lord your shepherd? Is the Lord your shepherd? Then you shall not. When we going to believe this? When? We're going to wait another millennium? We're going to wait another century? God said, if you just be willing, that's Isaiah 119. Just be willing. Don't get mad at me if I'm blessed. It ain't my fault. I just will it. Deuteronomy 818. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. I do it every day. Oh, God. See, most people... Uh, actually focus on the wrong word in that verse. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. They're looking at that wealth. Man, where, where the powerful word is, remember. It's like a Spock. Remember. I mean, even Spock believed in prosperity, live long and prosper. And you can't have what you preach against. If you don't believe in healing, you're going to be sick as a junkyard dog, boy. See, your blessings are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. So what are you willing to declare? What do you want? See, you know why people need money? You don't want to know, can I walk around a little bit? You, because I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable tonight. You know why people need money? Because they don't know how much money they want. Amen. Look at y'all. Y'all look like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> you don't know how much money you want. You want to just enough money to pay your bills. Oh, God, can you just get me to the end of the month? And you forgot to ask for food. That's your wife, right? You're going to need some money because something's coming. And I ain't talking about when, he, when that baby born. I'm talking about 
your whole life. That's a big investment. Seed sow it. Harvest. Now watch this. Thank God for the child, right? Wait, God's going to expect you to bless them in the city, bless them in the field, bless them going in, who mail of it, whatever it is, going out, just like God does to you. Why would he give you a baby and let the baby starve to death because you couldn't make her live it? Oh, the reason why people don't have the money they want because they don't know how much they want. They just come up with some crazy figure. The Bible said, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh what? What is the definition of rich? Ah. I'll bless you according to my glory, my glory, riches and glory. Have you ever done a study on how rich God is? Whoa! The universe, now multiple universes. My God. Your blessings are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to Declare, but but just I don't know. Write this down. I don't know limits you in life. I don't know limits you in life and cause you to live in lack. Not knowing will cause a delay in your blessing. Because if you don't know which belongs to you, you're not going to know when it passes you or gets close to you. If you be, if you let us not be weary and well doing, for in due season we'll reap if we faint not. Listen to me. I don't know limits you in life. It doesn't limit God. It limits you and cause you to live in lack. Not knowing will cause a delay in your blessing. How do I know? Well, Paul said in 2 Timothy 1, 12, for I know, not I believe, for I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I commit to. Well, you got, do you know what you're committing to God? Most people don't. Well, what of it, Jesus? Like one lady said, I just believe for her and I'll take anything. I said, you're going to get anything. <laughs> I've seen some ugly husbands. <laughs> and I had one boy, he was really wanting to marry. He said, I'll take any woman. No, you don't say that. Ain't no telling what you get. Gag a maggot ugly. <laughs> now, uh, you know, <laughs> don't look around here. What do you want? Mm. I don't know limits you in life and causes you to live in lack, not knowing what causes a delay in your blessings. Why do you have to wait so much? Well, because you don't know what you want. You're trying to figure it out. When all you have to do is say it. It's going to sound crazy to the intellectual activity, the range of the research, the induction and reasoning. Your mind's not going to handle that. This is your spirit talking. That's why your mind has to be transformed so your body can receive what your spirit is saying to your soul to transform it, to get it, spiritual, physical, or financial. And I don't give up on nothing. The reason why I married Kathy, she would never stop asking me to marry her. <laughs> it's my story. I'm going to say it the way I want. <laughs> she said, you lying, boy. She said, you a legend in your own mind. <laughs> Which brings me to my point. Persistency. Persistency in asking never fails to open the floodgates of God's power to you. Persistent. Persistent. Now don't quit. There ain't no quit in me. There ain't no quit in you. People are always asking me lately, oh, but Jesse, when are you going to retire? I said, do I look tired? Well, no, no, no. Why are you saying that? I don't know. I, I, I don't think I ever will. I, I could. I could have retired 20 years ago and, lit, and just go to Hawaii and suffer for Jesus <laughs> in Maui. What am I going to do? Just play golf? That'll send me to hell. I tried that once. I ain't doing that no more. They say, I relax you. No, that causes you to cuss when you shouldn't cuss. <laughs> And if preacher would tell the truth, they'd say that they ain't speaking in tongues out there. I want to let you know that. <laughs> Persistency in asking never fails to open the floodgates of God's power to you. I will not give up. No. No matter what. 
And one man said, well, suppose you die, then I go to heaven. Now, I personally believe, ladies and gentlemen, I, I would be totally shocked if Jesus did not come in my lifetime. But if this is the days of Noah, do you understand that? You look around, hey, this is the days of Noah. Now, if he don't come get me, I go get him. I mean, anyway, I'm going. That not this. I just want to go into rapture. I don't believe in the rapture. We'll stay here. Amen. Just stay here if you want. I want to go for that ride. I want to go past Bezos and Elon Musk. I want to look over at Jupiter and go, hey, look at this. I want to travel the universe. I'm a traveler. I've been traveling since I'm a, well, since I'm actually an adult. I, all my, except for three years of my life, which were normal, when I got out the music bin, I've traveled all my adult life. That's what I do. I, I want to go to the, the Andromeda galaxy. But he said I can have what I say. He flung it with his hands. You didn't read that? It's his. That's the glory of his riches or the riches of his glory. Call it what you want. You see, when you understand persistency. Oh, by Shekhar, thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you why you were born here. You know why you came to the earth? To fill positions when you get to heaven. Let me give you a revelation. What you do here determines what you're going to be and what you're going to do there. If you think when you get to heaven, you're going to be laying on the ground and angels dropping grapes in your mouth, you done lost your ever-loving mind. God is a creator. Right now, the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light. You know how fast that is? No, you don't. You don't know how fast that is. Because he's still creating. He said, I need positions filled. Because we're the body of Christ. You know who's going to fill those positions? Those that go in the rapture. Those, the church. Those people in the millennial kingdom. They're not going to have the same body you have. They're going to have an adam like body. They're going to have to eat of the tree of life to stay alive. They're going to have to eat of the leaves for the healing of the nation. But you will have a new body like Jesus. You will have liquid God flowing in your veins. You know what kind of body that is? This body here. See this pooping? It's made up of molecules and atoms. Watch my hand. I can't get through it. With that new body, I'd be able to go through the molecules. That's why Jesus can walk through the wall. Now the people in the millennial kingdom will have this kind of body. We are called to fill these positions. How do I know that? Where do you think Lucifer was when he sinned? He wasn't in heaven. He said, I will ascend above the most high God. He was here, a sign. And if we could get down to the bottom of the oceans and excavate those bottom, we'd find these class of whoever he was ruling. This was his planet. You don't think God got a sense of humor? Took his planet away and gave it to a guy named Adam. Made him mad as a hornet. Do you see that? What position will you hold? Whew. When the Lord spoke that to me, I went to shouting in my, in my study. He said, I'm looking for positions. I need to fill these things. Hallelujah. Oh, should I say that, Lord? Yes. <laughs> I had a guy, I guess I don't know what was on his mind. Brother Jesse, do you think there'll be any sex in heaven? <laughs> Lots of it. <laughs> Look at that lady, huh? <laughs> yes, we're going back to the original plan. Not you, you're the body of Christ. You got a much higher order. You're gonna live in a much higher order than that. Amen. But those people in the millennial kingdom, he gonna say, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue. In other words, we're starting over. Could be sure. Why does a woman have all these eggs? The minute she's born, I'm talking millions. Now, how many of them produce? Depends on how many kids you have. But, I mean, even people with big families compared to the millions. Of, why is that? Why? Because God doesn't waste. Because you were created. You were created to populate this universe. But sin came in. Oh, y'all listening. Huh? Woo, what shall I do for thee? This is all planned out, buddy. So these positions 
us with this new body, we would be so far above what I call the natural. Ruling and reigning. If he's the king of kings, who's the kings he's king over? Oh, come on. Do you, do you understand what's going to happen? We're going back to Genesis 1. In the Milky Way galaxy, there's at least 400 billion planet, moons, and stars in it. One galaxy. We know of at least 400 billion galaxies with 400 billion planet, moons, and stars in each one of them. That's what he did. It's, that's beyond human comprehension. Well, if you look at your physical body as a woman, it's beyond human comprehension. How many eggs you got? I mean, how many you use in your whole lifetime? Do you understand the plan? See, and the church is going to control this. And God will pick from the church the positions that are needed in the new heaven and the new earth. So I may be over the Andromeda galaxy. You may be over some other, I don't know. Where are you going to live? New Jerusalem. We, we, uh, I'm going to commute. Amen. I've been to that city. I, I, I've been there. I don't care what anybody says. I've been there. And you won't travel by the speed of light. That takes too long. Even if you fold in space, which is now they say you can, you could take a, 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 a million years and put it into a few hours. No, you'll travel by the speed of thought. You think you're there. Because you've got God inside you. That's the positions. Some of y'all are freaking out. I'm going to get some letters on this stuff, boy. But it's true. See, if you just be willing. Why do you think Paul was trying to get to heaven? You heard him crying when anybody ready to cut his head up? <laughs> I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept faith. Now watch this. They're going to cut his head off. That later for me a crown of rights. He ain't worried about losing his physical head, son. A ruler. A king who the king of kings is king over. Positions. So persistency in asking never fails to open the floodgates of God's power. See, don't let the fear of choosing make you choose nothing. So many people are afraid of choosing that they choose nothing. What a waste of spiritual energy. What a waste of great talent. Don't let the fear of choosing make you choose nothing. See this I don't know stuff? It's, something, it's sometimes an excuse to just stay where you are. Pick and stick. Pick and stick. Me and Kathy were married 51 years last Sunday. Yeah. June the 6th. Why? Pick and stick. Have you ever had arguments? Yeah. Who won? Most of them she did. Because I let her. <laughs> I knew I'd get a reaction out of that. No, I just joked about that. Well, I got to make the sign of the cross on that one. Y'all excuse me for that. Or let me say Hail Mary, Hail Mary. Pretty great love. <laughs> Pick and stick. See, the fear, but don't let the fear of choosing make you choose nothing. I don't know, it's an excuse for some people just to stay where they are. I never take people's opinions that are in the boat. Amen. Not me, Phil. I'm on the water with Jesus. You think I'm going to let some fool in the boat say, you're going to be out there? Yo, mama. You can't even get out on the water and you're going to tell me what I'm doing when I'm walking this water. You need the sign of the cross. Why are you worried about that kind of... I don't mean that to be rude. What do you want to take the, <laughs> the opinions or the wisdom of somebody that won't get out of the boat? Jesus is not in the boat. He's on the water and everything around him is under his feet. I'll show you how powerful Jesus is. When Peter walked out the boat, Phil, he didn't know who he was looking at. He said, that be you. He don't know. Like, don't you think Peter ought to recognize Jesus? He's the head of Jesus' ministry. Amen. Your father, right? You work for him, right? It'd be kind of odd you'd say, who is that? <laughs> That's exactly what Peter was doing. But you see, fear blinds you. Amen. Fear blinds you, boy. He don't know he's just walking. 
He's stepping over waves, Phil, because he got his eyes on Jesus. But when he took his eyes off of Jesus and he looked, took at the winds and the waves, he figured out he was Lord. Lord, save me. Watch this. When he, he was walking in fear on the water because Jesus' faith, Phil, was holding him up. There are a lot of people focused on Jesus and they're walking in fear and they make it. Don't shot me down when I'm preaching good. This is revelation. Listen to me. But they take their eyes off of Jesus. Huh? Son, you won't sink. And the Bible said he beginning. He didn't sink. He's just beginning to. That's in one of my chapters of my book. I, I never learned to doubt. See, fear blind you. <laughs> the man don't even know who he's walking to. And yet he's walking on the water. Because it's, you focus on your priority, you eliminate all your confusion. See, pick and stick. The fear, don't let the fear of choosing make you, make you choose nothing. You see, I don't let critical people steal, or let me just say it like this, don't let critical people steal your joy or sideline your faith. Critical people will try to steal your joy and sideline your faith. I've had more of that stuff. I don't think you ought to have that yet. I don't think I asked you. And I don't mean that to be rude, for God's sake, man. You didn't ask me about your car. Well, I don't understand why you have to have a jet. I said, well, how'd you get to, the, how'd you get to this meet? Well, I drove my car. Could have took the bus. Why'd you go buy a $40,000 car and pay insurance and oil and gas when you could have, took, could have went for $5 on the bus? And the guy looked at me and said, so I can leave when I go when I want and come when I want. I said, that's the, re that's the reason for the jet. It's a tool. I don't know how to fly it. But I do know how to buy it. <laughs> My pilots don't know how to buy it, but they know how to fly it. I know how to buy it. They don't know how to fly it. But if we get together, we come to faith as the victory. <laughs> you see? Don't let critical people steal your joy or sideline your faith. I won't do that. Not that I'm better than them. I'm not. I don't want to sound arrogant or cocky. I know it sounds like that, but I made up my mind. Have you had enough of the devil? Have you had enough of him? This is what sets you free. You must awaken your conscience to believe above people's objections. You must awaken your conscience to believe above people's objections. God will overrule their objections. Amen. He'll overrule it every time. They're objecting about this and all that. God just says overrule. It's so wonderful. This is so easy to live like this, but you need a good theologian to help you misunderstand it. Now, if anybody believes in education, I do. I love intellectual activity. I love range and research. I love induction and reasoning. But when it comes to spiritual things, that don't hold no water. Because God is spirit. And you worship him in spirit. Not in feeling. In spirit. And in truth. And if he's the way, you can't get lost. If he's the truth, you cannot be deceived. If he's the life, the devil can't kill me. If he is what he says he is, he's not a truth or some truth. He is the truth. So you must awaken your conscience to believe above people's objections. God will overrule their objections. I never forget when the COVID hit, you know, people, preachers call me and say, oh, but Jesse, what are we going to do? Man, you know, I'm, I'm a traveling man. What are we going to do? I said the same thing we did when it wasn't here. We're going to occupy until it comes. You think a, a virus that you can't see is going to shut you down? Why don't you use something else you can't see? That's your faith. Since you're believing for something you can't see, well, believe for something you can't see. Believe faith. Evidence of faith not seen. God always gives in overflowing. Does. If you want to know it's God, if you just meet your need, God's always more than enough. He's got over 70 names. He loves his name so much that when Moses tried to, to kind of see, he said, you can't see me and live. So I'm going to stick in the cleft of the rock and I'm going to put my hand in and then and when I pass by, I'm going to let you see my goodness. But while he was doing that feeling 
<laughs> Charles, he was proclaiming his names. God was calling his names. Go read it in the scripture. Oh man, El Shaddai, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Roho, Jehovah Ra. You go read it. He's speaking. Boy. And he said, Moses saw all his goodness. You know what that is? He saw you, Sue, because you're good. He saw you, Charles, because you're good. Phil, Bob, he saw you. Moses saw you. That's the goodness of God. He saw me. He saw everything God. He saw the Andromeda galaxy go into existence. The Milky Way. He saw the Big Bang. Boom, boom. All oh, in just. <laughs> he got so excited. He wrote about himself. Moses is the meekest man in all the earth. <laughs> now, that's kind of cocky, isn't it? <laughs> you write that about yourself? No, when you flood it with the spirit of God, that's God speaking through you. He saw the goodness of God. Saw everything God ever did that was good. God always gives an, an overflowing. Don't cap off the goodness of God with limited thinking, limited faith, and limited words. I don't cap off the goodness of God with limited thinking or limited faith or limited words. I guess you just say everything's going to be, um, yeah. I say what I want, not what I see or not what I have. You know, when you ask God to forgive you your sin, do you think that's when Jesus found out that you sinned? <laughs> no, that's when you decided to get honest with yourself. You see, limited thinking. Limited faith or limited words. You know how many preachers told me I would never own a plane? I didn't ask for the planes, Sue. I, I, I didn't, Sue. I didn't, Barbara, I, I didn't ask. I'm driving on the road, going into, passing the Lafayette uh, Airport, 1978, in a Toyota gas car, in 19, 58 cents a gallon, and I couldn't fill up the Toyota. I went into full-time ministry. Gave all my money away because I thought you had to be poor. I didn't know, you know. When you don't know, you don't know. But I didn't know I was planting seeds. I didn't know anything about that. I just going because God told me to go. And a jet flew over my head and God said, look up, Jesse, I'm going to give you a jet. I thought, a jet? I can, in my mind, intellectual activity. Whoa, I can't even fill up a Toyota. I'm going to fill up a jet. <laughs> Gave me the greatest statement I've ever give, given me in my whole life. And I've said it here a bunch of times. Jesse! I didn't ask you to pay for it. I ask you to believe for it. Oh, that goes off of me like a shotgun every time I say that. Boy, talk about take the pressure off. I didn't ask you to pay for it. You're not going to get that. Now, either you lying or God's lying. I pick you. <laughs> See, don't let your destiny in receiving pass you by. I refuse to do that. I'm not trying to be a big preacher. I don't know if y'all saw some of that. Uh, we had over three or four hundred, three hundred something thousand people. I decided, I very seldom ever talk about the heaven trip. Did anybody see that on you? you talk, very seldom I talk about that because I don't want to exploit it. And, uh, but I mean, I was there. But I tell you what, people going to slap crazy. Over. That happened in, in 19, actually 1988. They had Magnolia, Arkansas, room 105 at the Best Western Hotel. I've had Hollywood directors and producers offer me millions and millions of dollars to make a movie out of this. And I told them no, because they want total rights. But you know they're going to put something in there that ain't true. That ain't going to happen. That will not happen. Mm -mm. You see, I don't let my destiny in receiving pass me by. And I would have never said it again, brother. But back then, you know, I thought God made the biggest mistake of his life to bring me to heaven. I said, you got the wrong man. You need Billy Graham. That's what I was thinking. But my God, man, I was preaching in churches of 50, 60, 70. And I had a lot of meetings, but, you know, small churches. Billy Graham was all over the world. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Today, 2.9 billion people on broadcast television only in 14 different languages listen to me preach the gospel every week. 
since 2020 of January to the end of, what is this, uh, May? Over 20 million, what, 200 and something thousand people hit on us on um, social media. A whole nother generation. But I didn't know that then. I didn't need, see, he was right, I was wrong. So you know why I did it, brother? Because when he took me first, he said, go tell my people I'm coming. And I'm sitting in my office, my study at my house. The Lord said, I want you to talk about that. I said, oh, Jesus, you know, so many people have had the experience. You know, they just run it in the ground. They try to build everything on. I don't mean that to be critical, just the truth. I said, he said, no, I want you to tell him. You listen to me, every one of you. Listen to me. This is what the Lord said. He said, tell him this time I'm coming sooner than they think. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is coming. I'm telling you, he is coming, buddy. Now, I'm not just saying that because of the trouble, but in the midst of all the trouble we see, and I call it the Noah days, as it was the days of Noah, the church can flourish in the midst of it all. See, if you miss this theme, what shall I do for thee? You will miss your opportunity and never reach your true destination. What has God called you to do? Do you know where you're going? Do you know when you're going to get there? Oh, man. Let me say it again. If you miss this theme, what shall I do for me? <sighs> you will miss your opportunity and never reach your true destination. See, to get in touch with God, you got to use his language. I built a room for God in my house. I have a beautiful home. <laughs> Jesus. It blows your socks. It blows people's socks off but I built, I have a chapel in my house. There's pews about this size in it that I got out of uh, Edinburgh, Scotland, over 250 years old. I get pictures of Christ going around the walls. I said, this is God's room. I took Holy Communion, it's Saturday. When people come to see the house, they go, oh. And everybody that criticized me about that house, they sure want to look at it. Yo, mama, I ain't letting no doubt and unbelief get in my house. Amen. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm bragging about that. But let me tell you something. My mansion in heaven, I've been in that one too. Now I got a, I live in a mansion. I ain't gonna lie about it. God, don't get mad at me. It ain't my fault. That's right. His will be done where? Honor. His will be done where? Honor. Where? Honor. Where? Honor. As it is where? What are you mad at me for? Let me look at the people stream on live stream. Why are you mad at me? I'm just being biblical. The difference is I just got enough guts to say it. Yeah. Not because I'm full of courage. It's because I am giving, I'm remembering the Lord that God. He's the one that done that. Yeah. I couldn't have done it. If I'd have done it, I'd have done it 50 years ago. Couldn't do it. But God could. Let me close with this. You must have fixed thoughts on who God is and what he said you can have. Do you know what he said you can have? That's why you couldn't change Abraham's mind. He's 100 years old. He said he considered not his body being dead. He staggered not at the promises of God. And he's fully persuaded. Yeah, but, but you ain't no 100 year old man had no baby. Ain't no 90 year old woman gonna get pregnant. But his thoughts were fixed upon what God said. You must have fixed thoughts on who God is and what he said so you can have. What are you believing for? Not only can God do what you ask, believe God will do what you ask. So I just say he will do that. Who do you think? It has nothing to do with me. You're focusing on the wrong situation here. It's on what God said you could have, what God said you could do. Doesn't make him no difference. He's just waiting for you to say something. You know, I, I got a good friend of mine. He's a Jewish guy. I love the Jewish people. I preach in Jewish synagogues. The Jews love me. But they know I'm a Christian. I preach in one of the biggest synagogues in Boston. These rabbis, they love me, man. When they see my library, they freak out. They go, oh, my good river. You caught what we have. I said, oh, yeah. I got the Talmud. I got the Talmud. 
I have it all. I got it all. I got the Jerusalem one. I got the Babylon. I got, I got everything they got. They go, oh, and all their sages, Ram Bam, the guys that they, that's their apostle Paul. You know, they go, ma, I can't get over that. So he says, I want you to come in and preach for us. You see very interesting things. I said, well, you know I'm a Christian, yes. I said, well, can I say the name of Jesus? He goes, not too much. <laughs> well, in the honest, you know, not too much, but okay. And I looked at him and said, did you know, Rabbi, that Jesus is Jewish? He goes, huh? I said, what's the matter? You don't like your own people? That's what I'm talking about. You say such interesting things. I said, well, Christianity they couldn't have, wouldn't, wouldn't have never been birthed without Judaism. So I got a friend of mine. We do business together. And I love him. He's a blessing. He said, Jesse. I said, what? You're going to try to convert me? I said, no. I wish I could, but I can't. I told him, I said, God can't convert you neither without your permission. See, you got to believe with your heart. You got to confess with your mouth. Now, God can make you, but he won't do that. See, not only can God do what you ask, believe God will do what you ask. How do you get there, Brother Jesse? Make the word a habit. And you will know it's his will to do what you ask. That's 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. I work when I need to not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You've heard people say, if you don't study, is it possible you can wrongly divide the word of truth? He didn't just say read, he said study, which means get into this thing, break it up, do some things here, you know. You see, I make the word of God in my life a habit of just living the way this Bible said I could. One man asked me not long ago, suppose you lost everything. I said, can't take what's in here. Mm. But I'm going to tell you something, I'm not. Oh, they think, boy, that man's strong. No, no, I'm not strong. Don't, don't put this on me. What I'm talking, this is the shield of faith in front of me. I have the shield. I don't look and say, is the devil gone? No. Keep, keep, your, head behind, keep your head behind the shield, for God's sake. huh? He ain't going nowhere. He's trying, he trying to shoot you. He's trying to kill you. God. I don't know why people just so slap crazy. They don't even know if they're a boy or a girl. Well, let me give you a revelation. Check your equipment. It'll tell you what you are. It's going to tell you what you are. Well, I don't feel like it. Don't mean what you feel. Well, I, 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 I don't feel married. That don't change it. You are. Ain't no different what you feel. I just let my light shine. A person asked me this. Oh, watch this now. Brother Jesse, I want to know what you think about Black Lives Matter. I looked at him and said, what are you asking me? Are you asking me about black people or are you asking me about the organization? He couldn't answer that. I said, black people, I'm for 100%. I don't know they're black. That's right. I, they don't know I'm white. We're the human race. Now that Black Lives Matter, they got some thugs in there because I saw a guy who's black who owned a business and they're burning his business down. And he's screaming at him and he said, look at me, I'm black. You're burning my business. This I put my whole life in this. You think they cared? You see? When are we going to believe there's just one race? Well, you know where you're going to learn it? Let me tell you how you learn it. Go to the nursery. They're the greatest teachers. You got a little black baby, brown baby, red baby, yellow baby, white baby. They're looking at each other like that. They love each other. They play with the toy. You know, they, 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 they don't know. Don't tell them. And this thing's over with. I don't have any, I mean, you know, I mean, Creflo Donald told me, just how long we've been preaching together? I said, oh God, Creflo, 28, 20, 29. He said, you don't know I'm black. I said, thank you for telling me. <laughs> now, I don't think of Creflo Dollar as a black man. 
Oh, I don't think, my mind does not, I don't think that way. I think of a gift. God does not create mean people. Mean people create mean. God loves people. So I just enjoy my friends of all nationality, color, or creed. I don't care. Don't make no difference to me. Why? Because a friend stick it closer than a brother. So I don't have to make an excuse for anybody in any way, shape, or form. I'll tell you a true story. When I was uh, 16, that's a long time ago, I worked for a man named Mr. Pate, P-A-T. He owned a lumber company called Pate Building and Supply. He was a great guy. Yeah, I'm just trying to make a buck, you know what I'm saying? 16 years old, you could work a lot younger in those days, you know. <laughs> there was a guy named R.G., I called him R.G. He's a black guy. Me and him, we worked together. My buddy in Louisiana in August, that's Africa hot, son. That's 95, 97 degrees, 100% humidity. We sweating like mules, boy. We were loading that lumber, putting it on trucks, bringing it out to the location, stuff like that. There was a couple of white guys beside me in the, in the I called it the warehouse or whatever, whatever, stuff like that. But me and RG, you know, uh, I guess they made us do all the dirty work, but we didn't care, you know. Now, in those days, you don't have what you have today. Uh, you go there to, to get a drink of water. Uh-uh. What they had was a, 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 like, a like a bucket with a dipper with some ice in it. You went over there, you know, get you some water like that, you know. And they don't care if you sweat and pass out. They ain't nobody cared about that stuff. I remember one time it was raining and I went to Randall. He said, where are you going? I said, it's raining. He said, it don't rain. It don't rain. Hit the job. That's the way I was raised. So man, RG said, man, I'm thirsty. I said, me too. So I said, go get some water. So watch this. Why don't you take the dipper, dips it in the water. Boy, that, that cold water, man. He drank like that. Man. He, he only drank about half, but he feel when he's about I said, give me the half. And I grabbed it, and I, I grabbed the dipper, and I went. Oh. And these two guys, they saw that, these two white guys. They said, and they used the N-word. Can you believe that Jesse drank after them? And I looked at them. I said, what'd you say? I wasn't saved in those days. I said, what'd you say? And R.G. grabbed me and said, no, don't, 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 don't start nothing. I said, R.G., don't bow down nothing. I said, me and you can whip these fools. I'll use this dip and make it a hammer. I'll beat that sucker's brain. Up. I was mad, boy. I was hot, man. I, I was. I wasn't big. I wasn't small, but I could hit. I could hit hard. You know, I was just, I wasn't a very big boy, you know, but I, no, 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 don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Well, somebody told Mr. Pate, so Mr. Pate come walking out there, but maybe 30 minutes later. Got the two guys, the white guys. He said, y'all come over here. He said, RG, Jess, come here. He said, boy, it's hot out here. Well, I'm gonna just say what he said. It's hot as hell out here, ain't it? <laughs> now, in Louisiana, that's not cussing. That's a location. <laughs> maybe in Tennessee it's cussing, but not in Louisiana. It's just a location, <laughs> Well, you know, hell's hot, but oh, this is hotter. You heard people say it all the time. Mr. Pace said, it's pretty good water, isn't it? So he takes that dipper, the dipper that RG drank out of, that I drank out of, he sticks it in the water. Now, according to everybody, now the water's contaminated, you know, according to them. He goes, whoo. He said, have another sip there, RG. And when the boss told you to drink, you drink. So he said, he said have some of that, Jesse. Yes, sir. He said, let me get some. He looked at those two guys. He said, you're fired. <laughs> and he said a few other words that I cannot say because it is cussing. <laughs> <laughs> That's cussing in Louisiana. <laughs> then R.G. had tears in his eyes. I, I, I didn't know how to cry because I was told never to cry. I said, Come. I said suck it up, RG. Uh, RG, suck it up. Oh, don't, don't show your emotion. You know, just suppress that, you know. 
I was wrong. God had to teach me to cry. Kathy said that to me two weeks ago. God forbid that a tear would come in your eye. <laughs> I was raised not to cry. We don't cry. We men. You're five years old. Suck it up, boy. I don't care if a truck roll, roll over your legs. Put them bones back in your leg, boy. Don't <laughs> you cry. Let your sister cry, but men don't cry. Any man ever been raised like that? Hold your hand up if anybody... Oh, please help me. Hold your hand if it's true. Tell me the truth, buddy, just the way it was. So I still struggle with that sometimes. I ain't gonna lie about it. But I'm getting better. <laughs> just, I, I, the older I get, I know I'm getting emotional. I heard George, President George H.W. Bush, he said, I don't know what's happening to me. The older I get, the more I cry. <laughs> but I never cry. But that day I was watching a movie. And I went, Kathy <clears throat> <clears throat> said, you cry? No, why would I cry? What about you? you <laughs> but I'm doing better. At least I think I am. Kathy said, you're doing better. Boy, it's hard. See, I got to unlearn that. That's not an easy thing. When all your life you've been told, we don't do that. We men. I only hugged my mother once in my whole life. Five years old. And my grandfather went, come here. We men, we don't do that. Shake her hand. True story. My daddy at 84 years old came and apologized to me and my oldest brother. Every, all my life, I shook my dad's hand. We don't hug. My sister and I hug. You know, we men. I'm talking as little boys. <laughs> and daddy took our money. We'd work, man, and he'd take our money. <laughs> and made you feel guilty if you said anything about it. Anybody ever been there? Come on, be honest. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That's right, yeah. And my brother Wayne, he's in heaven. He passed away last year. He says, uh, Dad wants to go eat with you, me and you. We're going to come up to New Orleans. I said, okay. I thought, maybe Dad would like to eat at the country club. He never seen nothing like that, my dad, you know. So he come walking up to me. feel like it. But for me, do you feel he's walking like this? So I, uh, and I want you to stick your hand out. I went like this. How you doing, Dad? He goes, and he hugged me and I went, uh, uh. And Jody, my daughter, she said, hug your daddy. I went, is something wrong? How you doing? Dad, you okay? I just, never before, never. I went, he said, tears of I'm sorry. I did wrong to you and Wayne. I asked you to forgive me. Me and Wayne both said it in unison. It's okay, Dad. Where the money? <laughs> Where the money, Dad? Where the money? He said, I spent it. I apologize. I made y'all, I wanted to make you men. I said, Dad, we were five, six years old. Just, but he was raised that way. And you know, up to the point that he died, he died at almost at 89. Every time we'd see, I didn't know. I'd go. And he'd say, it's okay. To unlearn. You see, to unlearn. I thank God that I never had to unlearn. That's why I never learned to doubt. See, it was easy to believe some of these unbelievable, impossible, yet doable things. But there's some areas that I need to, that I'm working on, my, you know. You work out your salvation or your soundness with, with reverence and all, not scared, but of who he is and what he is. And when you understand that, see, one more story, then I close. Leroy Thompson, a good friend of mine, and his uh, anniversary is June the 5th, and they were married 50 years this year. I was with June the 6th, and we were married 51. Now, he's older than I am, but, uh, uh, but not, you know, just not much. But Leroy is mushy. I mean, he loves Carol and his wife. She's a wonderful woman. So I didn't notice we, we spent our anniversary together, you know. 
So we go out, I said, well, you want it? I said, I'm buying this is your anniversary. He said, well, I want to make a toast to Carolyn. So I thought, oh, that's not even Happy anniversary. He goes, Carolyn, you have been the most wonderful person in my life. I thought, what's wrong with the man? You got to suck it up, man. What's your problem? You're crying. I just love you and glory. Oh, well, God, I said, oh, God, what would you do? And she just loved it. Kathy goes, you next. <laughs> oh, God. So we went to our hotel rooms. He, he said, you got your speech ready? I said, Leroy, I can't, I can't do that, man. I don't do that, Leroy. Oh, you got to do it, Jesse. You got to do it. I said, I can't do that. I can't do that. I didn't sleep that night. Jesus, man, I can't do that. Good Lord. You, you do that behind closed doors, but not Kathy. Suffer, sucker. You're going to say every word. <laughs> and look me in the eyes when you say it. I couldn't get it out. I tried. I said, Kathy. You know. <laughs> she go, uh-uh, uh-uh. Leroy, no, you can't do that, Jesse. Come on, pull on that knowing of God. I said, spit on yourself, Leroy. I can't do that. God had to send Leroy Thompson to help me. Sometimes I didn't want to go with him on the anniversary because I got to say the speech. Not that I didn't love her. You just don't do that. I was, you don't do that the way I was raised. Has any man ever been raised like that? Anybody? <laughs> Look at that lady. says, it's... This sucker right here needs this sermon. <laughs> it's hard. You know, a woman will say, honey, I love you. Men go, me too. That's telling you something. But I'm doing better, huh? Well, come on, help me out here, Kathy. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to give an altar call. Man, go ahead and lie, then you repent after I get you. <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> what y'all laughing at? It ain't easy. Now, it may be easy to you. Now, it's easy for me to look at cancer, di- I don't mean it's probably cancer, diabetes, something terrible, and go, that's nothing. But to say, I love you in public to your wife, but you can say, I love you to people, but I mean, you know, you know you're getting close here. You know what I'm trying to say? Good Lord, dear man. <laughs> One time, Kathy threw a light like a beam of light on She went, Speak it out. <laughs> it burnt my pupils out of my mouth. <laughs> I said, listen, woman, you know, if you know, what are you worried about? That's stupid. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm telling you some of my weaknesses. I don't mind. I'm wrong. But I'm getting better. You see what I'm trying to say? You understand? I asked the Lord to help me. I mean, I know if I'd have been standing by Jesus when he old Jerusalem, he started crying, I would say, what's your problem, man? You got to suck it up, Jesus, come on. <laughs> come on, man. I mean, you're God. Come on, man. Come on, suck it up. You don't do that. Okay, I just read this sign. Do not move the podium from this spot. <laughs> oh, okay. This is where Pastor Cowan wants it to be placed. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, we put it there. <laughs> they don't want to move the platform. No, move it. <laughs> I thought that was a revelation. <laughs> Some of you are Baptists, you want to laugh so bad. Go ahead, just laugh. It's all right. There's somebody saw you walk in here. <laughs> now, I come down to this. What shall he do for you? This is just a little piece of this. If you, my partners, I take different scenes in the Bible and I'm writing on them, and I hope you can get them and, and, and keep those 12 once the year is finished. 
go back and read that over because all God want to do is be a father to you. Who can cry? Who can laugh? Who wants to bless you beyond your wildest dreams? Spiritually, physically, financially. He don't care. Church world does. Secular world does. But not him. Now I do that with my daughter. I act just like God with my daughter. Jody, what can daddy do for you? Dad, you do so much. No, no. She's going to be 50 years old in October. She said, Dad, can you believe it? You're going to have a daughter that's 50. I said, yeah, I was there when you was born. I can't believe it. I'm going to be 72 next month. I said, yeah, I can believe it. Yeah. Let me, Dad, you do something. No, no, you don't understand. Yeah, my, my granddaughter, I only have one daughter and one granddaughter. My granddaughter is Meredith. Her name is Meredith Margot Walker. I, we call her M&M. I say M. I've never told her no. She's 13. Never. Jody's going to be 50. Never told her no. Kathy has many times. <laughs> because I'm a wimp. I can't say that. Jody called me up the other day. She said, Dad, you, you never tell Meredith no. I said, well, everything she says makes sense to me. <laughs> What's the problem? Now, I'm going to tell you something you may have a hard time believing, but it's true. I've been preaching 45, going on 46 years and God has never told me no. Never. He has a hard time saying that. Because he just wants to be God. Kenneth Colton said if, 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 if sin wouldn't have taken place, God would have never had a serious thought. He would have just blessed this family. We'd be in the garden of Eden just enjoying ourselves. But sin took it over. So what shall he do for you today? Would you stand to your feet? Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute. If you don't know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, then pray in English. But just pray in the Holy Ghost and let God just be the blessing you want. I, I need a couple of ushers to help me if you don't mind. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. I'm going to go down that aisle right here. You can go down. You can go down. Come on, just thank the Lord. Can I, can I pray for you, sweetheart? Would you just stand right there? Stand behind her, lift your little hands up. Oh, God. Oh, girl. By the end of this year, you will shout for joy. Oh, because see, you're willing now. Things hadn't been easy, but they're going to get there. Jesus, touch her. People keep praying with me. Don't worry about the family. Someone think you're a little overboard with some of this stuff. But you're not. You're right on target. You're right where I want you to be. They think you're a little too religious, a little crazy with these things. He said, ah, I'm going to show you more than you, they've ever seen and more than you've ever seen. So you get ready, girl, because me and you are going to party. And we're going to party together because you my daughter and I'm your God. Jesus, touch her. Somebody shout somebody. Come on. Come on, just thank the Lord. Come on, people, pray with me. Lift your hands up. Stand behind it. The God got one word for you, sweetheart. Yes! Yes! Come on, somebody shout. He just said yes to her. Come on, people, pray with me. Now, if you get nervous about this, just close your eyes. Ain't nobody will see you. Just thank the Lord. I want to pray for that lady right there. Can I pray for you, sweetheart? Come here. Just come on out of here. Come on, people. Pray with me in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
Yeah. The Lord said, pray in the Holy Ghost over her because I'm going to surprise her and I'm going to surprise the devil. I'll open the doors. All doors have doorknobs. You can push them open, but don't push them open. You'll know exactly where to go, what to do, when to do it, where to do it, and how to do it. Because I'm gonna I'm make doors like grocery store doors. Before you get there, they open up, and then when you walk in, they close behind you. I have a plan, I have a destiny, and I have a destination for you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, and I saved you for such a time as this. Thank you, Jesus. Receive, Lord. Some people say some things they shouldn't say. But let me tell you what I say about you. I find no fault in you. Because I see your heart. See, I don't judge what people say. I judge the heart of people. Jesus, touch her. People, lift your hands up. Thank God for that. I wouldn't mind having that myself. Come on, boys. How you doing, mama? You can stay right there. I just want to pray for you. I have so much joy that it makes people mad. It does. I don't know why, it just does. But the Lord said, I'm going to take a portion of your joy and place it on this lady. And if you'll believe me, your body will get stronger. Look at me. I'll say it again. If you believe me, that's the Christ in me. Your body will get stronger. Things will get better. They say it in English, and I will cause you to forget the past. Because the past has beat on you terribly. And I'll cause you to see the future, Father, in Jesus' name. Touch her, Lord. Bless her. Honor her, Lord, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Just cause the past to be gone. And the freedom of the future to be seen. Thank you for healing her body, making her stronger. Every area of her life, because she want to do some things. And she's got to have to have the ability to do it once, spiritually, physically, financially. He said, tell her to ask me for all three, spiritual things, physical things, and financial things, and see if I'll not do what I said to you this night, say it for me. People, lift your hands up and bless God about that. Lift your hands up and bless God about that. Christ so cold. Isn't God good? Come on. <laughs> Can I pray for you, sir? Would you come stand right there if you don't mind? Come on, people, keep praying with me. For you that don't want to stand what's going on, guess the spirit in operation. That's all it is. Lift your hands up, young man. Whew. Stay behind him, boy. Jesus. <laughs> See, my, every time you try to do something, you run into a barricade. Bam, bam. Hit, st stops. St what, Lord, what am I doing wrong? Nothing. These people don't want you to prosper. They say one thing in front of your face, but they say another behind your back. But if you'll give me a little bit more of your time, I'll make them all see what I have for you. And I'll cause great opportunities to come your way. And you will receive what you wanted and what you believe for. But here's a warning. Don't let that opportunity that I'm going to open for you. Don't use it as a vengeful thing against those that tried to hurt you. Just let my light shine through you and my blessing. And I'll help them and I'll help you. Jesus, touch him, Lord, touch him. Honor him, Lord. Bless him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. He has a right, Lord, just like anybody else that you created on this earth. I decree and declare it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for letting me pray for you, sir. People, lift your hands up. Bless the Lord for that. Come on. I want to pray for the baby. Yeah, come here. Kathy, I'm going to need your help. Kathy, I'm going to need your help. I'm going to lay hands on this unborn baby. We're going to get a baby filled with the Holy Ghost inside his mama like John the Baptist said. Do you know what you're going to have? A boy. A boy. Lift your little hands up right there. Both hands, Mom. Sue and Barbara. Come on, husband, you can. Sue and Barbara. Both of them. Barbara, Sue, come. 
I want y'all, because these people are full of the Holy Ghost. I want, Sue, you can be, put your hand right there on that side. Barbara, come on this side. Put your hand on this side here. I want y'all to touch this, baby. <laughs> and sweetheart, I'm going to just put my hand on your face. Father, you feel John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb. Jesus, make this baby a preaching baby. Oh, God, that when these doctors, they touch this child, they know they've touched a special person called for such a time as this. Bless this lady. Bless this baby. Stay behind her, boys. In the name of Jesus, we set ourselves in agreement right now that it shall be. Yes, it shall be. I decree and declare it today. Somebody shout in here. Come on. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. People, lift your hands up. Bless the Lord. Y'all stay behind. Bless him, Jesus. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, God. Stay behind him, boys. Honor him. I sent you a special person. This child will be special. I didn't say better than any other, but I said special for something that I want done, even as a child. Remember those words that I speak to you tonight. Because this child will say things you never thought a child would ever say. Jesus, bless him, honor him, touch him, Lord. Top of his head to the sun. Come on, somebody shout, somebody. Woo, thank you. Come on, thank the Lord for this. Come on. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, shout with me. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Isn't God good? Thank you. Isn't God good? I like the way you smile, saith the Lord. It brings joy to me. Sometimes my kids do wrong things, but when I look at you and you smile, it makes me remember my covenant. Ooh, that's a powerful word. So smile more. It blesses your heavenly Father. And I'm going to give you some things to really smile a lot for. Touch your Jesus. Come on, people. Somebody shout somebody, will you? <sighs> oh, God. I will push the oppositions away. Because deep down inside, you want to do something. You had a lot of hindrances to you. But the day of hindrances concerning what you to do is over. I shut it down today. Watch what I will do in Jesus' name. Somebody shout. Oh, God got some big stuff for this lady. Big stuff. Come on, keep praying with me in the Holy Ghost. I'm almost finished. It's, it's okay if I, I can keep going. Okay, thank you. Come on, thank the Lord. Pray with me in the Holy Ghost. Woo, Jesus. Isn't God, isn't God good? And let me pray for you, sir. Paul said, just look to your right. That's okay. Lift your hands up, sir. People said things to you as a kid growing up. They didn't care if they hurt your feelings or not. They just say things. You a thinker. You hold a lot of things here. I'm going to give you some revelation you never thought you would receive. What do you do, sir? You're an attorney. Attorneys ought to really be able to understand scripture because they're taught to read words, not just paragraphs. The Lord said he needs people like you. 
Because Satan is going to try to do some things. But people like you will stop it. Because you know the law. We know about the law. There's a difference between knowing about something and knowing something. That's night and day. See, a lot of people coming to you asking questions, including other attorneys. Oh, Jesus, yes. Jesus. Jesus. That's powerful. That's your wife. You part of this too, girl. Jesus. Ah, uh, Mama Pray in the Holy Ghost there. God needs people in this last day, in this last time. Can I pray for you, sweetheart? You believe your shirt? God is so good, it's overwhelmed. How old are you? 14. I used to be 14. See what you're going to look like? Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> Lift your little hands up. You can be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. I promise you before this congregation that I'll go before you and behind you and around you. The choice is in you. If you stay close to me, you will reach your destiny, get to your destination. And I see in my spirit thousands and thousands, not just a thousand, thousands and thousands of people following you. But it's because you're gonna, you say the right things, you only say what the Father says, and you only do what the Father says to do. Remember those words, and I will make your life such a blessing to all that know you, but there'll be an awesome satisfaction inside you all the days of your life that you are a person in whom I am well pleased. My, 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 my. Somebody shout. Isn't that nice? That's nice. Can I pray for you? What's your name? Bobby? two surprises are coming Bobby I asked the Lord what they were he said it ain't none of my business he said that's why I called them surprises because if I told you Jesse you'd tell them I guess I would I got two good surprises for you I said well say more Lord he said then it wouldn't be a surprise but it starts tonight. Oh, Jesus, it starts tonight. Jesus, Lord, God. Come on, somebody shout, somebody. Oh, come on, somebody shout for me, will you? Help me. Lift your hands up, pray in the Holy Ghost a little bit more. Come on, oh, worship team, lift your hands up, pray in the Holy Ghost. If you got to play an instrument, that's okay, but just thank God. How'd that baby feel it? <laughs> this is for four people here tonight, and I don't know who you are. Normally, God sends me, well, I won't go down. Tell these four and they'll know it immediately. You can live as long as you want. Don't talk to me about the end because the end is not yet. But if you want me to make it an end, I will. But death and life is in the power of your tongue and not mine. Because if I say something to you, say if the Lord, I will say life. 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 You haven't asked me to rejuvenate your body. When are you going to do that? 
That's for four people here tonight. He said, finish it. I await what you're going to say about that in your private time with me. And whatever you say, I will honor it. Remember, your destiny and destination is in your mouth. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. That's very powerful. It's truly amazing what God will do if people will just let him. I really don't want this year to end because of this theme. What shall I do for thee? Because there's so many desperate people that need help. Spiritual, physical, financial, all three. I got a friend of mine who's getting married. I'm about two months older than he is. His wife went home to be with the Lord. I guess what, a year and a half ago, Kathy? Two years, something like that, roughly. He met someone very honorable man and he called me and I heard joy in his voice I love to hear joy I'm a very joyful person myself the joy of the Lord is our strength and he says I've fallen in love and God made it happen I never researched I never looked at it And you were the only one who would call me consistently. Are you okay? I'm here for you. You need me. I said, every person has a right to be happy. He said, do you want to know how old she is? I said, no. (laughs) No. Didn't have anything to do with age world thinks that because if that was so true then Abraham would have never had Isaac or Sarah you know what I'm talking about the situation nothing everybody has a right to be happy now why am I saying that because there's a person in here in the same situation And you want to make sure you make the right decision. Now, I'm not going to embarrass you. But let me tell you how I make decisions from my life personally. And all the decisions of Jesse the Planet's ministry, which cost millions of dollars a month. I mean, millions. I wish it was a million, but it's millions. <laughs> and it's St. John 16, 13. I based everything I've ever done on that verse. How be it? When the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you in how much truth? Every decision I've ever made for my ministry, for my personal life, I found it upon that verse. Because before I was born, God had that verse wrote for all of us and when I found it I have such confidence in it that's why I've never had doubt because I'm never alone I'm guided constantly I don't even make my own footprints I feel I just step in his I only do two things in my life I only say what my father says and I only do what my father says. Jesus said this. I adopted that in my life. Ephesians 5, 1. Be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. So, you're going to make the right decision because you're in the right place at the right time about ready to do the right thing 
and joy will fill you and happiness joy is the fruit of the spirit happiness is an emotional feeling you put them together you got an on fire Pentecostal an on fire Catholic an on fire Baptist an on fire Episcopalian or Presbyterian or Church of God or Church of Christ a word of faith a full gospel or symbols of God when you understand this and God will honor you so Make your decision, and God will honor it. Or like he tells me, Jesse, make a decision, and I'll back it. Well, we've stood on that a many times, thank heaven. Make a decision, and I'll back it. That's confidence in St. John 16, 13. That's not just saying, well, I hope this is going to work. No, 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 no. That's confidence in that. That don't come overnight. It takes discipline, dedication, and commitment. And then one final thing. I am finished with the world, Charles. <laughs> There's nothing in the world that just interests me. When I got born again that day, Labor Day weekend, 1974, I gave my life to God in a bathroom in Boston, Massachusetts. I did not need deliverance. I hear people say, after they say they got delivered, and I understand all that, don't misunderstand me. Uh, but right, I mean, the, the, night, the day before, I'm drinking a fifth of whiskey a day, sending up, God. <sighs> Never have had a problem with any sin of that nature, ever. I asked the Lord why. And he said this statement, I love it. You let the purity of the gospel go as far as the pollution of sin. It created me anew. So every day, what will I have me to do? Remember, there are open positions. Don't forget that. This is the first church I said that at first convention. Am I correct, Kathy? I, 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 I hesitated. He said, I got to fill positions for the next life. What you do here determines what you'll be and what you'll do when you get there. Use me, Lord. That's what Isaiah said. Can I find somebody? I, 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 use me, Lord. Yes. Use me. Yes. Lift your hands up one more time and thank you. And while you're doing that, Father, if there's one here that don't know you, I ask you to forgive them. And let them accept you as your Lord and Savior, as their Lord and Savior. Let it not be a spirit of religion, but a spirit of great awareness of God. God, a creator who loves people. Forgive them of all this sin or trespass or iniquity, whatever it may be. I sure could use another brother and another sister in the Lord. I call it done, Lord. Fill positions in this church here for the next life. Because I believe it's going to be sooner than we think. Let us all be found with our hand to the plow doing your work. In Jesus' name. I give the Lord a standing ovation. Good seated for just a second. You can still keep playing. Almost forgot to receive an offering. I had. You know, when you give to our ministry, all the offerings y'all ever given me, Charles, Phil, 
I use these two guys a lot because I, I've been preaching for them for years. 100% of what you give goes in the world evangelism. I, um, I love to tell people what I do with finance in my visionary conference, which is coming up in July. One of the greatest compliments we get is they can't get over this. I show them when we received an offering the year before, this is where that, where that money went to. They can't get over that. Most people give, they never know. You know they go see, nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying, I said, this is what you gave. And they just go nuts. I've had so many ministers say, God, yes. I said, well, you, you need to know. Ladies and gentlemen, our ministry is very blessed. The Lord has blessed us with a beautiful aircraft. But you know, God always warns me. We went and preached at Delway Church there in Kerrville, Texas. Delway was a singer on TBN, you might, kind of a country and western singer. Great guy, great guy. And, um, so, and I know that plane like the back of my hand, even though I can't fly it. I know how it feels. I know. And Kathy was with me that night. Normally she's not, but she was with me. Boom, boom. And that jet, that jet, I mean, climbs, boy. So we're sitting there, and we, maybe no more than about five minutes after takeoff. All of a sudden, the plane went, whoa. I mean, I almost did this come on. I said, something's not right. And what the air traffic controller did, he put us on the same trajectory as another plane coming this way. But thank God for good pilots. They caught it. And I believe the other plane caught it too. So we straightened all that kind of stuff. I said, what happened? They told me that. I said, we need some better equipment so y'all can see that quicker. See, the devil will try to kill you. So what we're doing is I said, let's find out we got something that can pick that plane up before we have a chance to see it. And that's what we're doing. It just came back. We've installed some stuff in there. And we're all looking, looking at another avionic package. The engineer's got to work all that stuff out. And uh, wasn't afraid, but this is where your money's going to. It's going to cost about $500,000. This stuff is very expensive. You can just pick up stuff, you know, just. They even got some of it. I don't know if it's in this particular place. That it'll actually divert the plane. Put it over. You ever been in a car now? They got cars, but they got all them cameras that if you fall asleep, you know what I'm talking about? Some of the cars that just, <laughs> you start to cross that white line. Mm, that's what I'm talking about, but up in, in the um, air. So everything's fine. We were safe, but the guy made a mistake. People are human. Well, my pilots caught it. They saw it immediately, but what they need is bigger things to see those things faster. So I said, okay. I said, Lord, he said, do that. So if you don't mind the offering that you're going to give tonight, I'm going to place it toward that. I can believe for 500 people give $1,000. I've had it happen many times. Have you ever had a $500,000 gift? Yeah. Many times. Have you had a million dollar gift? Yeah. Quite a few times. And 100% of it goes to where God tells me to put it. So I'm going to ask you to do your best. There's an offering envelope. Have you all passed them out yet? Okay, would you please open? Pass them out. This is a Jesse the Planet's ministry offering envelope. Now, I want you to listen to me. You're never going to hear a preacher say this. If you don't want to give, look at me, look at me, look at me. If you don't want to give, don't. We're still going to be fine. But the anointing of increase is on my life. So if you don't mind, this is your money and not mine. I'm going to place that toward that. And then what are you believing for? You might want one of them cars that if you cross the white line, it'll wake you up. I don't know what you want, but God does if you'll tell him. If you're writing a check out, you make it out to JDM. As Jesse Depends mentioned, you'll get a tax deductible receipt for your giving. On, on the uh, screens, that's a text to give. It shows you how to do that. If you want to do that, it's also on the envelope. You can use PayPal if you'd like to give in that manner. Or you can go to JDM.org, our website, and hit the donate button. And if you don't mind, I'm going to place it toward that. That way we're safer and better. I asked my pilots about that and my mechanics. I said, I don't want to say something that's not true. 
He said, what you're saying is true. It'll make us a lot safer. So I'm going to ask you to do your best. And um, we're going to get this and pay cash for this. We already got it in the works. Hallelujah. You got to get in line. We have one person right now doing the other package. That's got to be finished out. And then we don't want to be number two, but we don't mind being number three, number four, maybe number five. We want to make sure that all working. You can't pull over at 40,000 feet. <laughs> and we were coming here tonight. We were at 43,000 feet smoking more. And that's got very great equipment in there. But this is not, not smoking, but going fast. Cats is smoking. You're going back to when you wasn't saved. No, I ain't talking about that cat. <laughs> but this stuff here, they upgrade it constantly. Well, you know, you know how technology is now. I mean, you think about this. 15 years ago, your cell phone was this big. Remember that? Not like that. I mean, Superman don't even have a place where he can change clothes anymore. Some people just caught that. that look at the young people. What? He used to change in a phone booth. He was Clark Kent and he came out Superman. Anybody remember that? I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> but technology, we're going to stay up with the technology. We're going to put that in there. We, found, we just found out about it in the morning about maybe three or four months ago. But when did it happen? When was that Dell Ways? And uh, so we want that so that we're never going to have that problem. Look at me. Don't give me anything that belongs to your church. Or God's not going to hurt your church to help me. We don't do that. We never charge churches when we come. We never give anybody expenses. Never have, never will. I remember, I call him Little Phil, your son. He got hold of one of my tapes and books when he said, oh, but Jesse, by preaching, I got, I got out of debt. I said, oh, that, that, that's so easy to do. I, everything I said that night is so easy. Don't complicate it. Children are born believers until you teach them the doubt. That's right. That's right. It's a learned process, ladies and gentlemen. So learn the right side so you don't have to unlearn. And God will honor you. So if you're giving, you can text to give. That's on the screen. You can use PayPal. You can go to jdm.org and hit the donate button. Or if you're giving a check tonight, you can make it out to JDM. You will get a tax deductible receipt and we will place these things toward these projects. That project. Hold your offering up to the Lord. I want to pray over it. I want to believe. I want look at me. The Bible says some 30. I'm not in that crowd. And some 60. I'm not in that crowd. And some a hundredfold. I'm in that crowd. Now I'm gonna say something taking an offering. Look at me. I am a wealthy man. Don't get mad at me, it ain't my fault. God trust me. You hear me say it when I talk to my partner. How come you've never had a financial deficit? You know what? I trust you. You trust me. We both trust God. That's just simply the truth. I trust you. I trust my partners. They trust me. We both trust God. No scandals. Some people tried to make scandals, couldn't do it. They tried to put scandals on Jesus. Even made a move about him called The Last Temptations of Christ. How stupid that was. That's an unregenerated mind. So, people say, what about all the expenses to come? Well, I, I don't care. He didn't ask me to pay for it. He asked me to pay for it. You notice I'm not picking up any money for the expenses. There are some, but I don't care. Why? Because I trust you. You trust me. We both trust God and God will honor you. Hold your offering up to the Lord right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I can't thank you enough for the hundredfold. That anointing is on me for that, Lord. I ask you to place it upon these. Everyone that's giving, whether they live stream and giving or right physically in this church, I ask you to bless them beyond their wildest dreams. And I thank you for it. And I believe you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Ushers, go ahead and receive tonight's offering. Have you, how, how do you do that? Oh, they come up? Okay, do you, I'll get out of your seat and walk up these white buckets. I thought that was Kentucky Fried Chicken there for a minute. <laughs> so y'all come.
Hallelujah, real quickly. Do not touch this pulpit. <laughs> Thank you for giving to our ministry. Thank you for being a partner to it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd like you to write me a little letter or comment on either Instagram or YouTube or Facebook. When 100 fool, when the blessing of finance come out and hit you so hard. It will. Did it for me. Why wouldn't he do it for you? Wouldn't it? I mean, makes sense to me. Why would God love me more than he loved you? He wouldn't. Why would God bless me and not bless you? I mean, I treat my granddaughter like I treat my daughter. Ain't no difference. I never told Jody no, and I'm never going to tell Meredith no. She just made 13, Phil. You know what I told her? I said, oh, M, that's a big, that's a big age. That's a big number, 13. Yeah. I said, I said the next one is 16. Oh, that's a big one, too. Oh, you're going to buy me a car. I said, yeah. I said, then the other one's 21. That's when you get sued. She said, what's that? You don't need to know. You'll find that out when you're 21 years old. <laughs> but it ain't going to happen. Big. You know, there's certain things in life that are big. Mine wasn't 13 or 16. Mine was 18. <laughs> Got out of school, graduated high school, May the 31st, 1967. Two days later, June the 2nd, I got a letter from the United States government. Good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> I'm on my senior weekend here. I'm, try, I'm just a kid. It don't make no difference. Always honor veterans. You don't realize what they go through. Always honor them. Thank God I didn't have to go. They said, I don't know, he would have no problem. Because in those days, I was, I was raised on the streets of New Orleans. You do what you got to do. I'll never forget that full bird colonel said, he, you scared to go? I said, you know how many people get killed in New Orleans every night? Ain't nothing. You just got to be on the right side of the bullet. He just looked at me. I want you. <laughs> and that ain't good, but I mean, that's just the way I was taught all my life. That's what my grandfather said. Somebody mess with you, alligator got to eat. That's how I was raised. That ain't fun. Thank God we got saved. Stand to your feet one more time. Now, I'm nervous about this pulpit here. I keep putting my hand on it there. <laughs> Don't you touch that book. <laughs> Did you see this sign, Kevin? <laughs> Don't want to mess it up. Oh, let me take this off. Here, here, let me take this off. <laughs> it's been a high honor. I wish I could be here tomorrow night. My God, the next night. Is it three nights y'all doing? Four nights or whatever? Through Thursday night. My Lord. Invite your friends. Tell them to come. Because I know Isaac and I know Mark Hankins. I call Mark the Prince of Preachers. I like old Mark. I told him one time he was struggling hard, boy, many years ago. And I said, Mark, you're going to outlast the devil. He went, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I said, that's right. You'll outlast the devil. We started out together, me and Mark. Did you know that? Now I'm older than he is. But I mean, we started out together. Now he's raised up in church. And I, I, I wasn't here for us. I mean, I knew a lot about God, but I didn't know God. Mama gave us Bible stories, you know, that kind of stuff. I wish I could be here, but I, I, I'm going to be in Idaho tomorrow night. And Helena, Montana, Tuesday night. And Tacoma, Seattle, Washington, Wednesday night. And Thursday, I'll be in New Orleans, right, Kathy? I think so. You coming with me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I like it when Kathy comes with me. Why? I don't know. We've been mad a long time. We travel a lot. And I, I, I promise you, I will wear the right thing. I was so glad that, because if Kathy would have saw, saw me with this on, live streaming, and I asked her right in front of Charles, said I could. <laughs> Charles said. 
Don't get mad at me, woman. <laughs> you brought that nice clothes. This, this ain't bad, you know. Anyway, it's a blessing. Thank you, Charles, for allowing me to stand behind the pulpit that I can never move. And I mean that. Give Jesus a hand clap as your pastor comes. Go on, turn it to you. Do you take it? If you want to, yes. Don't touch that pulpit, Charles. <laughs> 